So, you know, let's talk about the connection here with China. And I think regrettably, John Henry, that most Catholics do not fully understand the history of Catholicism in China since Chairman Mao, since the Communist Revolution. And they don't understand how the church related to Rome and, and, and the stresses that have been in that relationship. And then, you know, they hear about, oh, the Chinese were sold out. You know, they, they hear these things uh, reported or described, but they don't know what that means. So could you maybe just give them a an abbreviated version and, and help them understand what was the status quo and, and how that's been ruptured? Okay, so at least in, in terms of the recent history uh, of what we had, the Pope Benedict tried to work with uh, principally Cardinal Joseph Zen, uh, who is the Cardinal of Hong Kong, uh, to work with the underground church in China, which was the only true and faithful church in China, because the patriotic Catholic church is all about one thing, as, as Cardinal Zen will tell you, and anybody who studied the issue for a long time will tell you, they're all about making the Chinese state the be-all and end-all. They want to be God, they want to do away with religion, as all communist regimes have, and this is the process by which they're going to get there. They knew they couldn't do it by repression because it's only showed the martyrs, the, the, the church flourishes in the time of martyrdom. Mm -hmm. And so what they knew is they had to infiltrate, as you, you often mention, uh, the church. And they have done so with this version of the church they call the patriotic church in China, which has always had government appointed bishops and clergy who who were actually spies and, and so on for the Chinese government anyway. And so there was always this very healthy and growing underground church in China, which remained totally faithful to Rome. Uh, the popes worked with that uh, through Cardinal Zen and others um, with the underground church. And so this was going on going forward always with repression. Mm -hmm. The government, when they found them, would arrest priests and and uh, persecute people. We know they destroyed churches. They they destroyed beautiful shrines that they had in China, Catholic shrines all over the place, and more and more, more and more repressive as they could be. Now, under Pope Francis, they have come up with this uh, so-called Sino-Vatican Chinese Vatican Agreement, which basically makes the Patriotic Church the church in China, right. encouraging all the underground Catholics to come into it, which basically feeds them to the lion. Right. And this is known by all the people who were working on this situation. And the most interesting case is that of Cardinal Perilin. So Cardinal right. Perilin, uh, who's the Secretary of State, was actually the head of negotiations with China under Pope Benedict. And Pope Benedict was very clear in his messaging. Uh, we, you know, everybody understood the program, what was going on uh, in China. And yet now under Pope Francis, it appears that for whatever reason, they've decided just to cave in completely. And of course, they're saying, no, no, we haven't. We've made all these things. And, and now there's acceptance this first time, the wonderful agreement between China and the Vatican and so on and so forth. Absolute nonsense. Go listen to Cardinal Zen. Cardinal Zen was, of course, the principal, as a Chinese bishop, as the Archbishop of Hong Kong, was the principal uh, bishop involved in all of this. And he has been protesting for years already, begging the Holy Father, please, please, let's stop this. And in fact, what's really strange is let me see the agreement. He, Cardinal Zen, has not been allowed to see this so-called agreement that was signed. So all... <laughs> With all yeah, the, the, the claims, one guy who knows what's going on is kept out in the dark. Exactly. Exactly. And and that's because obviously uh, things are horrific. And you can see it for the reality that it is, because look at the oppressions of the Chinese Catholics. They're not only uh, uh, just continuing sort of or lessening a little bit. Oh, no, no, no. They're they're exacerbated since the so-called signing of the Chinese Vatican Agreement. There have been further persecutions. Those who have come up out of the woodwork um, are now exposed and uh, come up out of the, you know, out of their underground hiding. They've been exposed because they've been encouraged to do that by the Pope himself. Mm -hmm. I, I, I hate to mention this, but only a few days ago, on March the 6th, the Pope put out a a video talking to the Chinese, telling them to get with the 
the church, the patriotic church, what, what he said, in fact, was um, be good citizens. Uh, today, the church, uh, I'll quote it for you, it says, today the church in China looks to the future with hope said Pope Francis. He said the church wants Chinese Christians to be truly Christians and to be good citizens. They need to, he said, uh, achieve the unity of the divided Catholic community. That is insanity. For one thing, in China, what the Chinese government means by being a good citizen is having it first and foremost be about the Chinese go communist government rather than about God. They are in the place of God. That's why in the Chinese Catholic churches, they replaced the crucifix with the red flag of China. It is by no means Catholic. They are, you know, and we, as, as Cardinal Zen says, it's, it's feeding them to the lions. They've, they've fed them to the enemy and they won't talk. They talk all this talk about dialogue, this and that and this and that. And yet they're not dialoguing with Cardinal Zen. And they are dialoguing, as Cardinal Zen says, with the enemy. Yeah. Cardinal Zen was gracious enough to give us at LifeSite News an interview uh, a little while ago. So people are welcome to go and watch that full interview with him. Uh, just unbelievable, very frank. And you can tell from a heartbroken man who, by the way, maintains his faith because for him, God is first and foremost and won't lose that. But heartbroken because he knows these people who are under persecution. He knows many of the bishops and priests who are under arrest and, and some of whom have been killed. And so for him, these are very, very real and very horrific things that he's witnessing. His his own people being handed over to the lions by none other than the Pope and Cardinal Paroline and those working with him in, in, in a situation which, which has left him just uh, I'm sure wondering, but many times on his knees and, and uh, praying, and I'm sure weeping over this situation. I mean, the parallel stands out and other people have made it with the Church of England. I mean, imagine if Henry VIII and then, you know, beyond him, Queen Elizabeth I, you know, they're killing priests, they're banning, you know, the mass, all these things. And and it would be like the Pope saying, well, I know all you underground Catholics have been trying to keep the flame alive, but just make do with the Church of England. Let the mm. king or the queen appoint the bishops. Right? I mean, how is this even possible in church history? I, it's, it's impossible. If you look at the list of things that the, uh, that the Chinese government is insisting upon, which the Vatican has apparently yeah. agreed upon, it, it's absolutely unbelievable. So, first of all, under Benedict and John Paul II, the, the so-called patriotic bishops of the Chinese church, so the Chinese government appointed so-called bishops. May, I, may um, I just add well, a clarification, John Henry? So yeah. when, when John Henry's saying the patriotic church, he's meaning the, not that they're patriotic, he's meaning that this is the state Chinese sponsored church. It's sort of the puppet above ground church where the communists said, oh, you want a Catholic church? Here, we'll give you a Catholic church. It has bishops, priests, mass, everything you want. But we, the government, run that church. Yeah. And then there's this other church that was the real Catholic church that was going around underground, right? That was not taking its orders from the Chinese government. And so when he says patriotic, I just, I just want people to understand that that's that's the term that's used, and that's what that's what's being meant. Yes, exactly. So that's what they actually call it. They right. call it the Chinese Patriotic Catholic Association. And so, <laughs> association. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so what what they have, and what like, unbelievably somehow the Vatican has agreed to, is allowing the legitimacy of eight bishops from this so-called Patriotic Association, this Catholic, the so-called right. Catholic. Uh, church in China, government appointed, communist, and they were uh, communist government yeah. appointed. And not only that, they were excommunicated under Pope Benedict uh, and and, and JP Great point. And yet, those same bishops are now recognized by the Vatican as as legitimate right. bishops. It is impossible. impossible. And funny enough, too, the three bishops who were loyal to the Holy See. They actually stepped down to to allow for that to to be replaced by those government approved bishops. So it's 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 a situation that actually defies any kind of logic and understanding. It has left the faithful in China not only vulnerable but 
in a time of persecution where they feel they've been abandoned by the hierarchy of the church itself. And that's one of the saddest things. Thank God they have uh, Bishop or Cardinal Zen who continues to stand for them and to fight for them and to be a public voice for them and uh, to, to give them assurance of the one true faith. But when they see this coming from the Pope, from Cardinal Paroline, the Secretary of State in the Vatican, it, it makes for an impossible situation. They're under a pers kind of a persecution uh, that uh, that really is something unique in the history of the church in that respect. They're now being faced at the same time with the, the coronavirus epidemic. Uh, but a lot of them, uh, they might see, you know, some of these things as a mercy because uh, they're getting out of this situation. Those who are in persecution in the church always have very clearly in their minds the reality of the afterlife. And that's what they strive for. That's what they live for. That's what they wait for. All of these folks, they are in danger for their lives all the time when they practice the one true faith, when they live up to their faith, when they bring their children to the faith. Oh, one of the things that we should mention about the persecution, they don't allow children yeah. to go to mass. Yeah. Because they want to reserve it for when they're adults, they say, or yeah. whatever. For, you indoctrinate them as communists, as children, and then when they're 18, oh, do you want to start going to Mass? And they're like, no. Yeah. yeah. And so the program is to wipe out the Catholic faith. Right. It always has been, and that's the program of communism anyway. Mm -hmm. And yet we seem to be, the, and when I say we, I'm the Vatican and somehow seems to be totally oblivious to those facts. Mm -hmm. um, and how could we not have learned from history? How could we not have learned, as as our interview with Cardinal Zani mentioned, look at the concordats with uh, Napoleon and with Hitler. How, how have we not learned from that? that this, this is insane trying to negotiate with them because all they want is for you to be on your knees to them. Yeah. It's the same It's the same as what Satan wanted from Christ. You can, oh, you can have anything you want as long as you kneel down to me. Yeah. Um, and so that's what we're at in this, where we're at in this kind of crazy situation. We need to pray and beg for the Chinese Catholics that they may remain true to the faith, that they're given uh, some kind of assistance by our Lord. Um, and really, I think a lot of them who have died and have suffered these persecutions, these martyrs, uh, we can call upon now to help us in our struggle with the Vatican that seems to be totally out of control.